At the 48-year-old R.E. Ganae nuclear power plant in the upstate New York town of Ontario, the next generation of plant operators is running a drill. In this replica of a real control room, they're practicing how to add water to the nuclear reactor, one of the oldest in the country. Reactors that were built to last around 40 years. These technicians are part of 600 energy jobs that depend on financial intervention from the state of New York. Guinea is one of only four nuclear power plants left in New York, which gets 30% of its electricity from nuclear power. But this nuclear energy constitutes 55% of the state's carbon-free energy, the energy generated without releasing carbon dioxide, a major contributor to global warming. Joe Dominguez is executive vice president of governmental and regulatory affairs for Exelon, the owner and operator of three of the state's nuclear plants. Our customers want electricity that's reliable, affordable, and doesn't have associated air pollution. And so nuclear fits that role very well. But increasing financial losses, the Guinea plant alone lost $100 million in 2012 and 2013, pushed Exelon to consider shutting down their nuclear facilities starting this year. We had notified the employees. We told them that the jobs would be done. Across all of the plants that were affected, we were talking about 5,000 jobs. Given the age of the fleet, are concerns warranted about the safety? No, uh, I don't think they are. I think uh, there's a misconception that the fleet is the same fleet that was built a few decades ago. And in reality, we've changed all the major components, the computer equipment, and we've essentially retrofitted all of these plants to state-of-the-art technology. Proponents of nuclear energy argue these plants diminish the use of fossil fuels, providing a bridge to a future when renewable sources like solar, hydropower, and wind have greater capacity. How do you frame this conversation? Is this a climate change conversation? Is this an economic conversation? Is this an um, infrastructure conversation? It's all of the above. And I would throw jobs and environment into the mix um, more broadly than just climate change. There's a broad recognition among policymakers that unless you preserve that fleet, we're going to take a substantial step backwards. Let me give you an example. If we lost one of the small units in New York, we literally wipe out about 10 to 15 years of renewable development in terms of zero carbon energy in New York. That's why it's so important to preserve these machines as we transition to other technologies. What preserved the Guinea plant is the state's goal, set by Governor Andrew Cuomo, to cut its greenhouse gas emissions. Using the carbon dioxide emission levels of 1990 as its base, New York is hoping to cut its emissions by 40% by 2030 and by 80% by 2050. In addition, the state is planning to get 50% of its energy from renewable sources by 2030. If those plants were to shut down, it would be the equivalent of almost 3 million cars uh, that would be back on the road. Richard Kaufman is New York State's chairman of energy and finance. New York has experienced dozens of extreme climate events. New Yorkers see that the climate is changing and we we see through polling that we have overwhelming support for the governor's clean energy support policies. The state established the zero emissions credit, committing to spend about a billion dollars over the next two years to keep Guinea and Exelon's two other plants running. The program, which will last 12 years, requires New York utility companies to source a share of their power from nuclear plants. The cost for doing so is passed along to consumers. Since April, all New York State households have seen a roughly $2 surcharge on their monthly electricity bill. Critics will ask, why not give these credits to the renewable industry? We are providing substantial resources to the growth of wind and solar and other renewables in the state. The issue is that the nuclear plants provide a very large percentage of zero emission uh, power in the state, it's not practicable to, to replace all that power quickly uh, with renewables. But Jackson Morris, a director with the Natural Resources Defense Council, or NRDC, warns that relying on nuclear power to mitigate climate change has risks. Until we can begin to address the public health and safety risks that are presented by nuclear waste uh, among, and nuclear proliferation, all the other risks that come with nuclear energy, it's not a long-term viable solution. At the Guinea plant, four decades of radioactive spent fuel rods sit inside this concrete bunker right next to the plant. 
While the NRDC does not endorse further development of nuclear power, it believes in some cases, such as that of New York, nuclear has a short-term role to play. We're making great strides, but there still continues to be a lot of market barriers and market failures to the renewables future that we need to get to. And can they get there without nuclear? We can. It's not that nuclear facilities are irreplaceable. It's that you need time to make the transition. With about 46% of New York's energy supply coming from coal, oil, and natural gas, fossil fuel energy producers argue the state's zero emission credits interfere with the energy market. Right, we're running just under 1,000 megawatts right now, basically full capacity. Robert Flexon is the CEO of Dynagy, an energy company that operates coal, oil, and natural gas plants in 12 states, including New York. Well, the state says if the nuclear plants shut down, carbon polluting fossil fuels will replace them. Flexon believes the opposite, arguing the hole left by nuclear will be filled by renewables. At the end of the 12 year subsidy, what do you have? You've got some really old nuclear units that are 50 years old that need to be retired. And now you're going to charge the citizens again for putting in that next generation of, of uh, power generation that you could be doing right now. But in the short term, if these three plants were to close down, that certainly would be good for you folks. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a competitive market. And, and the way that New York was designed was to be the cheapest megawatt to the customer that's the unit that should win. But if they were to go away, I think you'd see a backfill of additional renewable. You're actually delaying the investment in renewables because re renewables then can't find its way in because the nuclear units are getting the entire credit and depressing the wholesale prices. Flexon says that credits give an unfair advantage to the nuclear industry. And we're all for competition. What we're totally against is when you pick winners and losers by, by plant or by location, it should be level playing field. And if, this, if, if a particular state or a region wants to put a price on carbon, put the price on carbon and let everybody compete. Dynagy's natural gas plant in Oswego, New York, pumps out enough energy to power 800,000 homes. That's double the Exxon operated Gene nuclear plant. And Dynagy's gas plant does it with a fraction of the labor force, just 15 people. But unlike nuclear energy, burning natural gas releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We recognize that CO2 and, and emissions and doing anything we can to keep out of the air, we recognize there's an economic cost to that. And we need to compete against, uh, against that penalty. Dynagy and others sued New York to stop New York State's zero emissions credit program. In July, a federal judge dismissed the lawsuit. Now, like New York, Illinois has adopted a zero emissions credit program to prolong the life of its nuclear power plants. States like New Jersey, Connecticut, Ohio, and Pennsylvania are considering similar measures. As in New York, Dynagy and other oil and gas companies sued Illinois. And again, their case was dismissed. Yet in both states, the NRDC defended the state's authority to map a clean energy future. The parties that filed those cases were essentially a who's who of the dirtiest, most inefficient, polluting fossil plants that had uh, stood to gain a whole lot of money if those nuclear plants went offline abruptly. It was not to defend the nuclear programs themselves. It was really that precedent and that state authority to chart a, a clean energy future that was a critical tool, not only for New York and Illinois, but again, going the wrong way could have jeopardized renewables programs across the entire nation. Even with the interest in extending the life of old nuclear power plants, constructing new reactors has seen minimal growth Earlier this year in South Carolina, utility companies pulled the plug on two planned reactors, the project billions of dollars over budget, leaving these two Georgia units as the only ones in the works. If completed, they would be the first new reactors built in the United States in 30 years.